so good evening everybody so what we have done is we have arranged a series of uh, lectures on research methodology starting from the basics to writing a systematic analysis and uh, uh, systematic reviews and meta analysis so first today we'll have the most uh, basic class on uh, research methodology that is how do we enter the data and uh, into the excel sheet and uh, understand the basics about how do we manage an excel sheet so for that we'll have uh, we have with us uh, the dr james green who did his ophthalmic uh, technician uh, course in uh, 2016 following which uh, he was a clinical research coordinator at the university of university of michigan and uh, currently he is the lead research investigator uh, uh, sorry lead research coordinator um, at the michigan medicine so over to you sir for your talk on uh, data entry and excel great thank you um i just want to first thank everybody over there at aravin for having me today this is uh, an honor to to be able to talk with you a little bit um the sun is just rising over here so bear with me as i <laughs> kind of start my day toward the end of yours um, so, uh, uh, as mentioned, my name is James Green, and I've worked with Kellogg Eye Center for about six years in a variety of different roles. Most recently, I'm a research administrator for clinical research. <clears throat> I oversee primarily uh, finances of our clinical unit and all of our 50 plus clinical research projects. Additionally, I manage uh, a lot of our unfunded agreements. Uh, which are primarily in the data use, data sharing realm, uh, and sort of monitor for institutional compliance. But I'm here to talk today um, <clears throat> about some basic strategies in data collection with the aim to produce clean- Excuse me, sir, just a bit uh, yes. louder. We are, um, the audio is a bit less. A little louder. Is this okay? Oh yeah, okay, sir. Can, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, feel free to interject <laughs> if I'm not uh, uh, clear. Um, <clears throat> so my my aim is to talk about basic strategies and data collection um, to produce clean, organized data sets, and then sort of go over how the strategies can work inside an Excel spreadsheet for data management. Uh, the first thing, and I'm going to try to share my screen here. I have a small, let me know if you can see this. Is that showing up for you? Yeah, we are able to see. Okay, thank you. So the first thing I wanna talk about are uh, data dictionaries. <clears throat> Before you begin collecting any data, uh, you, you really need to drill down into the types of variables uh, that you want to collect. Um, the last thing that you want to do is get through you know, 200 charts or so and then realize that you're missing some vital variable um, that you didn't uh, initially include. And the recommended way to do this is through the use of a data dictionary or a code book. <clears throat> uh, so the data dictionary is basically the uh, front page of your database. Um, it, is a set of rules that governs um, what data you intend to collect, uh, as well as the uh, appropriate standardized methods in which to collect them. Um, the data dictionary dictates the structure of your database, the definitions of your variables, the specific definitions of measurements, and ensures that others who may look at or contribute uh, to the data, <clears throat> excuse me, to the data set can collect data in the same way that you did. 
Uh, so what does this sort of look like? Uh, data dictionaries are generally not published, <laughs> so it's hard to provide a, a relevant example. Um, but this uh, that you see sort of on the right of the slide there is from the IRIS registry over at the American Academy of Ophthalmology, which I thought made a lot of sense in this context. It may be a little bit difficult to see the example here, um, but to start off, <clears throat> we want to create uh, headings for uh, your variables. Um, so the common inclusions. We're going to be looking at things like the so the element ID. This one is more for the statisticians folks. And uh, just a disclaimer, I am not a statistician. <laughs> um, so I may not be able to explain this uh, super well. But um, from my understanding, a lot of statistical software uh, things like REDCap even, they assign a one word name to each variable for ease of computation. Um, this should be unique, recognizable. Um, I'm gonna show another example later on. The AAO example here uses numbers. Um, I'm more familiar with using words and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like in, in just a moment. Moving on to the heading. So this is, this is your actual variable. Uh, it's the sort of the full name, the real name, what you'll see it called in the chart. Uh, this is your date of birth, your year of birth, uh, date of surgery, visual acuity. Um, it's sort of the keyword that you're looking for in your, in your raw data and your source to, to write the data. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, format, the format talks about the accepted format of the data. So if you're looking for year of birth, then your, the number that you're looking for when you're recording that data is a four digit number, uh, ideally between, you know, 1890 and 2020. Um, are you recording uh, dates? Are you recording text? So smoking status, this is gonna be a yes or a no um, and, and things like that. Well. We'll dive deep if that's not super clear. I have an example that should help uh, explore this. Um, but just for the purpose here, we'll move to values. <clears throat> the values here defines your format. Um, this may be blank uh, if the format is obvious enough. Um, but often you're going to want to reduce the number of words you're actually putting into your data set <clears throat> uh, and maybe assign a number to the text. For example, let's say uh, you're looking for gender. Instead of manually typing uh, male, female, um, which introduces the possibility of misspelling something, typos, um, which can cloud your ability to recall the data later. Uh, here, the AAO um, example, they assign a code. One is male, two is female, minus one is unknown. So later, when you're sorting through this data, and sort of, instead of sorting through male, female, you're sorting through one, to, uh, and you're able to sort of pick that up much more quickly. Um, and then definitions. So this is gonna be your free text area. If there's anything unclear at all, or something that could be defined in many ways, 
you're going to want to spell out what exactly you're accepting or what you're looking for here. <clears throat> Before I move on to kind of the next examples, does anybody have any questions on this so far? I'll take that as a no. This is a, a little dense of a topic, so I just want to make sure that I'm being uh, as clear as possible. <clears throat> so next, we're going to talk about our database. Now, this is different from the data set or the data dictionary. The database is where you're actually going to store and analyze your data. This is where the data is going to be collected. <clears throat> uh, it's separate from your data dictionary but it's built under the rules from your protocol or study outline and the data dictionary or code book. And so these are gonna be, you know, your REDCap databases or Excel as we'll talk about today. Uh, but REDCap works in the exact same way. Um, they're just built a little bit differently. Um, so, if you let me switch here, How does this look? Can you see the Excel spreadsheet here? Okay, so this is exactly what I was talking about uh, uh, prior. So this is this is a built example of a data dictionary. I hope you can see it. I'm going to blow it up just a little bit, <clears throat> but this has all of your those headings that we talked about. Uh, starting with your element ID. The name of the variable, the formats of the variable, accepted values in the data set and any supporting definitions. So your element ID, uh, as I said before, the AAO example used numbers uh, here it's done in a different way for uh, words. And this is what I'm most familiar with using. So for the study ID is the variable name you're looking for. You're assigning, taking identifiers out of your data set, you're giving every person a number. Uh, we call it the ID. The year of birth uh, for looking for age, YOB. Uh, zip code or postal code. I just put that down into zip code, right? So th these should be something that you can, uh, that makes sense to you, that makes sense to the data. <clears throat> the format is gonna be, you know, I'm looking for a number for study ID. I'm looking for a date for your birth. I'm looking for a number. Um, so when we get down to gender, this is what I was talking about, we have one for male, two for female, minus one unknown or missing. Uh, so we're looking for a categorical number. And I've expanded this to um, uh, sort of built out more of what that AAO data dictionary looks like. So you can see some of these definitions. So when they're saying, you know, they want to know if they're race, are they white? Yes or no. Uh, and white means having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, right? So because you could identify as uh, anything, um, there's their data set calls white any of these people. So when you get to an ambiguous chart, you can sort of try to determine based on the definitions of the data. Um, so here I want to show 
a couple of tricks in Excel. We have our data dictionary, and now we want to uh, actually build the database. <clears throat> um, you could just, for our purposes, our study is looking for year of birth, gender, and their IOP. So you could go through every single chart and just write it in, and that would probably be fine, but it would be a little arduous. Um, it can be hard to keep track. So there are a couple tips inside of Excel that you can use to make this a little bit easier on yourself. Um, so I'm just going to sort of, and you know, maybe I'll make a step-by-step -step instruction to send over to you um, <clears throat> after this. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to use a couple of tricks inside of Excel. And to get them, because they're not immediately shown, going into the options, so this is file, options, and then quick access toolbar. So what you want to do here is choose commands from anything that is not in the ribbon, as Excel calls it. And there are two things that I would recommend putting in here. The first one is scroll down their alphabetical called form and just add that in. The other one is the pivot table. And I'll, I'll show examples of both of these uh, pretty soon here. But once you have them in this area, you just say, okay. <clears throat> now the form is great. So you click sort of the, the first box here, A1, and we want to enter a form. Yeah, so uh, I did an error in collecting it, but if you read this, it says, if you want the first row of the selection or list to be used as label, labels and that's that, I click OK. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we want. And so now you have a handy miniature uh, electronic form that you can use, you know, side by side with your charts, and you can just type in what you need here. So study IDs, number one, your birth, gender, we said, from our data dictionary. Uh, and we can go back to that. One is male, two is female. So this is a female with the standard pressures and click new, all right? And so it automatically puts all those things, if I don't mess it up, it, where they should be. Another thing you can do here to make this a little bit nicer, uh, is highlight the top row and insert a table. And it's very important that you say your table has headers. I might have done this backwards. Maybe you want to do that first. And then do the form. <clears throat> because that puts every record right there in your table. So number two, year of birth, for the purposes of this, right? Every time you add a new set of data, it introduces a row to your table here. 
and you can do that for your entire data collection uh, study. <clears throat> One of the last things I want to kind of explore. So here I've already built a, a full data set. <clears throat> And there are some things that you can do here that are pretty nice. Um, you'll see that there are arrows next to every header. So this lets you sort through. So if we just wanted the females in our data set, we can filter by two. It gives us only them to look at. Uh, and then you can also put formulas in here. So let's say you wanted the average pressures, right? So this equals average Now you're going to see these numbers switch because I have a formula that makes them random. And every time I introduce something new, it changes. You don't want that in your data set. But this <laughs> gives you a, uh, a quick look at the average of all of your, all of your data. Uh, you can also add the sum or, or, you know, so if you want to know how many females you have at a glance, you know, sum of, sorry. The equal sign is very important. Equal sum of this column. That's not right. Oh, sum is adding the numbers. So let me show you a different way, actually. The other thing that I asked you to add to this table is the pivot table. So when you do this, you, we now have it up, I'm trying to point it to you. Uh, we have the pivot table up in the top left here next to the form uh, that we added not too long ago. When you add that pivot table, it gives you, uh, it tells you to select the range of the table, which is gonna be everything in your data set. You say, okay. And then on the right here, I'm gonna to have to move this. Uh, on the right here, it gives you uh, sort of different ways you can sort your data. Uh, and the pivot table really gives you an excellent way to summarize the data that you have. So if we're looking for gender, um, we have 22 people in our study. Uh, we could create these as columns. And then also put the sum of gender here. Um, you can change the values of these. So we don't want the sum of the numbers, we want the total number of people. So we want to count. Because um, like I said before, when I was having issues in the database is that the, the sum is just going to take all of those twos and add them together. So you're getting two, four, six, eight, ten. The count is going to show you how many actual people you have. How many variables there are. Okay. Uh, you can instead, you know, keep columns and in rows, let's do that the other way. Well, I'm not sure why this is not showing the way it should. So it can be a little tricky. Yeah. 
So we put IOP, right eye, we changed the value to average. And so now we have the average IOP from our data set for all males, all females uh, for the right eye. Um, uh, and then you can you can sort of play with this. Uh, so you can add in left eye too. And it's just a very quick way to to count up, summarize what you have in the main database here. So um, because this topic is fairly dense, <laughs> I wanted to kind of just start right there at the beginning and um, uh, and, and sort of go forward based on what you guys are looking for, maybe in another another time. But uh, this is this is sort of what I have as far as basics uh, for data collection. Is there any uh, questions? Anything I can clarify? Uh, none from here, sir. Other centers, do you have any questions? Um, from, uh, yeah. No questions, sir. Okay, well, I hope this was uh, at least helpful for a, a, a starter point. Um, like I said, I, I, I'll build a step-by-step -step instruction of how to create some of these tables, some of these Excel uh, shortcuts, um, and I'll send them over that can be distributed as needed. And then um, if you have anything else or, or sort of want to dive into specifics, I'm happy to come back and, and talk a little bit more. But I think that is all I have for for today. So thank you so much for having me. Sir, uh, why do the element ID and name, uh, why should they be different? Can't we just use the name as such? Yeah, it's a great question. So the, the element ID, especially if you're using software like REDCap and many statistical softwares, when they are uh, organizing the data or coding the data in a full uh, electronic database, they require that the element ID of the variable for coding purposes is one word. So uh, for many of our variables, they're going to have several words. We're looking for a year of birth. We're looking for zip code. We're looking for um, you know, a number of things that are long. And so the element ID is a shortcut version of it for um, for the software, particularly, um, uh, it, in, in databases like REDCap, they do this for you. <laughs> um, I wouldn't always trust what they said. I would change their variable ID, but they require something like this when you're building a database uh, electronically. So I, I, I don't know if I can speak 100% on the why. I think this is more of the statistician world, um, but it is a sort of a norm in, uh, in building these sorts of dictionaries. But in short, it's to condense the data into one word for ease of, of filtering and analysis in the future. So like, uh, I have a question, like uh, for uh, all the studies, like uh, whatever you are involved with, do you always maintain uh, an Excel sheet and then do a red cap data entry or uh, you directly do a red cap data entry? 
So like, go. That's a good question. So I wouldn't necessarily need both. Um, it, it, Red Cap and Excel are very similar in what they're they're capturing. Red Cap is a stronger version of Excel um, in that the databases when you build them. So going back a little bit, <clears throat> when we were talking about setting up this data dictionary, uh, we're creating this in order to create our data base, right? With REDCap, you do it backwards. You're creating your, your, your form, right? Uh, and the form, again, was here, right? Um, we're creating a database to give us a form. In REDCap, you're creating several different forms that you can then extract into a database. Um, and so when you're building a REDCap database, you're getting all of these variables in there in the same way. Uh, it's just organized a little bit differently. But once you are down to actually collecting data, you are putting your data into a form and then that data is being stored. Um, so no, <laughs> to, to, to shorthand answer your question, I would not have both REDCap and Excel unless there was a, you know, a reason that you needed it. REDCap can, you can export the data set into an Excel, an Excel spreadsheet for purposes of backup and uh, transferability. Um, so no, uh, there's no reason that I can think of that you would need both. Excel's easier uh, for simple data. REDCap has some expanded uses for, um, you know, multiple types of data that you're collecting. Uh, and survey data especially is really good for REDCap. Thank you. Um, th thank you, Dr. Green. Uh, uh, from other centers, uh, do you have any questions? No questions from LICO. Other consultants uh, from Pondi, statisticians, Ram Lakshman, Madam. So th thank, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Green, uh, for this uh, lecture on uh, how to manage an Excel sheet. So what do you feel like? Uh, do we need uh, more sessions to understand the basics of Excel or uh, like how do we enter data? How do we analyze like that or? Yeah, so as far as data analysis, I believe that is coming into, you know, I'll, I'll check internally on the other classes that are being taught to make sure it's being covered. And about um, the creation of REDCap as well, is it an um, easy process like uh, that everyone can do or? Uh... Everybody can do it, yes. It's not it's not the easiest process, <laughs> uh, but once you get a hang of it, it's, it's not too difficult. If you'd like, I can definitely do uh, in the future, uh, um, sort of a quick red cap build uh, and, and show some of the functionality within that. Uh, if you think that would be. Um, so can we have another class you. on that? Like um, on how to make a red cap and uh... Uh, any other uh, things on Excel? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'd, I'd be happy to come back um, and, and sort of build something in REDCap with you. Um, I have to make sure I have uh, 
my red cap access up and running and <laughs> and get everything together for you but uh, for sure i would i would love to do that uh like i said red cap is is basically this process that we just did uh backwards you're you're using the same the same elements here where, you know we're still using we're we're creating forms for each specific type of data that you are looking for. Um, you're giving them names, you're giving them rules, you're giving them definitions, um, and then you're putting them together in just a slightly different way. Uh, but I, I'd be happy to do a trial walkthrough of, of sort of the basics of how to build that and then um, go forward from there. So uh, is it possible? Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't it... do it right this second, <laughs> but, uh, but I could absolutely do that uh, at a future time if that's okay. Yeah, probably next Tuesday we can have uh, the same timings, like five to five to five six. Yeah, let me just double check my calendar. I, I think that should be fine. The next Tuesday. Yes, that would be that would be okay at the same time. Yeah. Well, so next Tuesday, seven thirty a.m. for you will uh, meet same time to discuss about uh, the um, making of the red cap database and also if there, some people have any doubts on Excel, probably they can share their screens and ask you. Yes, please uh, feel free to. Uh, my email was given. <laughs> So if you if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, happy to to talk one on one if anybody needs anything. Okay, thank thank you very much, uh, Dr. Green, and uh, we'll uh, close this session today. We'll meet next week. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Have a good evening. <laughs>